What's up guys, welcome back. Jordan Parker here, owner of Optimize Minerals. In today's video, I'm going to talk about how minerals can actually help you lose weight, fad diets like carnivore, keto, stuff like that, and the glycemic index. So if you have issues with weight loss, diabetes, anything along those lines, you're gonna to wanna to stick around for the whole video. Okay, jumping right in. As a reminder, guys, we are giving away one free bag, right here, one free bag of Optimized Minerals every single month to a lucky subscriber, so make sure to subscribe. Hit that like button <laughs> and share with your friends and family. I would really, really appreciate it. Okay, let's hop into it. First, we're actually going to talk about the glycemic index. I know this may be understood by some, but not by others, so I'm gonna make it real simple for you guys. So you understand how to feel your best, lose some weight, and especially if you're stagnant with your weight loss. First off, what is the glycemic index? Well, it simply means how foods will affect your blood sugar. So certain foods have a high glycemic index, some foods have a low glycemic index. Okay, a really easy way to think of it is if a food has a high glycemic index, that means it's low in nutrients, okay? We'll, we'll go into this more in a second. High glycemic index, low in nutrients, okay? Low glycemic index, that means it's very high in nutrients and fiber and minerals and all that fun stuff, okay? So obviously, what should we aim to eat? Foods that are on low glycemic index, okay? If you eat foods that are on a high glycemic index, that just means you're gonna overeat. It's not gonna fill you up. So it's, that's your fast food, that's your processed foods and carbs, you know, your chips, your soda. So obviously things like cereal and ready rice and like already mashed potatoes, you know, the, the cheap, easy meals, fast food, most restaurant foods, um, all the stuff that we, I think, all know at this point is not good for us, <laughs> okay? So if you're eating those foods, if you haven't noticed yet, you're gonna eat more of them. You're gonna be able to eat 1,000, sometimes 2,000 calories in one sitting and wonder why you're still hungry. Well it lacks nutrients, it lacks fiber, it lacks the essential things that God gave us to be full, <laughs> all right? Second thing, obviously, low glycemic index. What foods are low? Well, fruit, veggies, proteins, like your steaks, eggs, seafood. Um, we have even like sweet potatoes, quinoa, beans. Um, and there was another thing I wrote down as well. Yes, this is a big one. Pasta. A lot of y'all think that carbs are the enemy and you don't eat pasta, you don't eat potatoes, you don't eat like any carbs because you think that's gonna help you. It's not. We're gonna talk about that more in a second. But nutrient density is key. So if you are gonna eat pasta, make sure it has a low glycemic index. Well, how would you know if it has that? Buy it from the right place. Don't go to Walmart and buy the cheapest pasta because that is stripped of all its nutrients and it's not gonna do you any good, it's not gonna fill you up, and it's gonna spike that glycemic index. But if you can source pasta from Italy, which is something that is very doable in the United States, you can find brands like BioNature, um, Hoviol even has good stuff with nutrient-dense wheat, Durham semolina wheat, that comes from Italy. That's good for you. And yes, even if you are gluten-free, which I used to be gluten-free, you can eat that. I will challenge your gluten-free and celiac, just go fly to Italy real quick <laughs> and eat some gluten and you're gonna be completely fine. All right, so high glycemic index means you're gonna eat more, means you're gonna gain more weight, you're gonna be less satiated, less full, and you're gonna be more irritable because you're making your body work harder. Low glycemic index means you're gonna eat less unknowingly. You know, it's hard to eat a lot of nutrient-dense food. Like, Challenge yourself. Try to eat really, really healthy, nutrient-dense food and try to overeat it. It's not gonna happen, okay? So you're gonna eat more, less calories. That's gonna help you lose weight. But most importantly, you're gonna feel full. You're not gonna be reaching for the, the cookies or whatever you guys reach for, okay? So that should, should be super easy to understand. Now, Next thing we're gonna hop into is fad diets. If you're somebody who's tried keto, you've tried carnivore, maybe you've tried, I don't know, there's like a million of them. If you've tried that, if you've tried a fad diet, drop it in the comment. What fad diet did you try and did it work? How long did you do it? Did you enjoy it? Probably, you know the answer, okay? 
Why do fad diets not work? Well, some of them may be healthy for you. They may be great in the short term as an elim elimination diet, help, help you teach, you know, help teach yourself new habits and things that you didn't know before. But the problem is how long can you do it? Do you really want to be on carnivore your entire life? Do you really want to never eat carbs again? Do you really want to never eat a cookie again or sugar? Because you don't have to do that to feel good. I promise you, you don't. Okay, so there's a lot of people that are on the extreme side of, oh, no carbs ever, ever. I only eat this. I don't eat any sugar. Okay, okay cool. But I don't really care how fast you can lose weight. I don't really care how good you feel in the first few months. Get back to me in about a year or two years and see if you're still doing it. You're probably not, okay? What impresses me and what should impress you is how long you can do something. How consistent can you be? How long can you keep that weight off and increasingly grow muscle and feel better? That should be more important than the next fad diet you do to try to lose 30 pounds in a couple months. It's not healthy, okay? So another thing to take note of, how our bodies, every single body works, it requires protein, fat, and carbs. If you cut out carbs long term, you're probably not going to feel very good. That's why a lot of people have issues with fatigue, um, so even some heart issues with low carb diets or doing, or doing carnivore for too long is not good. You guys can do your research on that yourself. It's pretty easy to look at. So give your body what it needs. If you're afraid of carbs, let me explain it a little more for you, okay? Complex carbs is what you want. Guess what complex carbs have? Fiber, nutrients, minerals, like the quality carbs we talked about earlier, you know, some potatoes, some healthy pasta, quinoa, things like that, okay? Nuts even, like almond butter, all right? Simple carbs is what you guys are afraid of. What you should be afraid of is a simple carb. If that's all you eat, carbs that come out of a fast food restaurant, carb carbs that come in a box that's mainly made up of flour and sugar. Like, yeah, that's gonna cause a problem, but you don't have to be afraid of all carbs, okay? So the key to number one, sustaining how you eat is one, you have to enjoy it. You probably hate your life if you're on keto or carnivore or in, like I said, you probably feel good, but it won't be long term. You're going to want the cookie. You're going to want a carb. You're going to want to eat a pizza every once in a while. And I'm going to tell you, you can, it's okay. The same thing goes for sugar. If you guys are a person that, you know, avoids sugar completely and doesn't eat fruit, please rethink your decision for not eating fruit. That's one of the craziest things I've ever heard of is people that avoid fruit because of the sugar. Guys, 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 guys. Refined Processed sugar is what we need to avoid. Not sugar that came from God, came from the ground, came from a tree. Like eat your apples, eat your dates, eat all the fruit you can think of and eat as much of it as you want. Why? Well, it has a generally low glycemic index because it's high in nutrients and low in fake stuff. It's real, it's real food. Eat your fruit, don't be afraid of sugar. If you're gonna avoid sugar, Limit your sugary treats to just, you know, just the weekend or something, if you want to do that. So, carbs are not the enemy. Sugar is not the enemy. Another one is fat. Don't be afraid of fat, please. Just eat good fat. Butters, avocado, olive oil. Your body, again, requires it, just like it requires minerals, carbs, fat, and protein, it requires it. All right, so throw out your fad diet. Stop trying to be consistent on something you absolutely hate. And I'm gonna tell you exactly what to do to help you feel better long-term and keep the weight off. Number one, slowly introduce changes, okay? Don't try to do a million things at once because you're not, again, you're not gonna like it. You're gonna, you're gonna get overwhelmed and you're gonna think it's too hard because you just add, you added 10 things at once. You know, hey, I'm gonna do steps, I'm gonna work out five times a week, I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat this diet, I'm not gonna eat sugar, I'm not, 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 and it's just, it's miserable. It's like, come on guys, okay? So instead, pick one thing, master it in one week. Move to the next thing the next week and just slowly add on something and then you will see how much better it helps you and how 
you actually just slowly created yourself a new lifestyle. Okay, that should be the goal. All right. Um, second thing is incorporate the foods you love. Like that, that even includes bad food. You know, I'm somebody who used to be gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free. I never ate fast food. I never ate anything bad, like ever. And I was more miserable. I was sick a lot. I didn't feel good. Okay. Because I think it was a lot to do with stress and fear around food. I was letting food literally control me and my mind. And I thought, oh gosh, if I eat this dairy, I'm going to get congested. I'm going to get a headache and I'm going to feel bad. I thought that before I would eat stuff, but something that helped me, you know, dealing with allergies, you, you guys may not have allergies, but I'll just tell you anyway, I started to slowly eat bad food and it's weird. I started to feel better because my mind wasn't worried about it. I was like, dang, I just ate this and I'm fine. Um, so that's the second thing. I recommend, this is what I suggest, this is a very common thing you probably hear is 80-20. 80% 80 of the time, take care of yourself, eat good, work out, all that good stuff. 20% of the time, do whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. So that could be the weekends. Every weekend, you maybe wanna eat out a little bit, you wanna do whatever you enjoy on the weekend, and then when Monday comes, you get back to work. You're cooking at home. You're working out. You know, I say three times a week is plenty for you guys. Um, three times a week workouts. Aim for ten thousand steps. It, like six to eight thousand at the least, but go above and beyond and get ten thousand. It's not that difficult. Okay, so you're gonna find when you implement eighty twenty that you're gonna be way happier because you're not necessarily adhering to a diet or a thing that you have to do. You now have both the best of both worlds because during those five days where you are taking care of yourself and eating at home and working out, moving, all that good stuff, you're going to feel better. You're going to notice how different you feel. And then if you do eat something on the weekends, you're going to also feel that. You're going to be like, oh, geez, I don't feel great. Um, but that is intentional and that's going to make you stay on that grind of, it's not really a grind, it's just those five days a week or whatever you guys choose. It's going to make you stay on that because you're going to feel better. You're going to enjoy it. And you're going to also be like, dang, I've been doing so good this week. I want to go reward myself with some fast food. If you really want to, I eat Whataburger a lot. Not a lot, but probably every weekend I eat Whataburger. I just like it. Um, but again, I'm not gaining weight. Um, I still have a very low body fat percentage. I don't have symptoms. I don't have headaches. I don't have fatigue. I don't have any of the things that most people deal with that are actually on fad diets and trying to stick with them, okay? So try that. Just try the 80-20 thing. See how you feel, okay? That's what I suggest. That's going to help you learn balance and learn to stress less. Okay, now another thing is this is what I ran into when I or before I discovered minerals and how important they were is I was eating a lot of good food, a lot of really nutrient dense food that I knew was good for me and healthy. But sometimes after meals, I was still hungry. I was still like reaching for stuff and wanting to snack and all that stuff. So what I learned is good old minerals, or however you want to take your minerals, but this is how we do it with the Optimized Minerals community. You notice one of the benefits on this bag, it says, curbs cravings. Okay. And, and understand like when I put a benefit on here, there's a specific reason it's on there and it, and it works. So it curbs cravings because you're getting nutrients and minerals that are not in the food anymore. No matter how healthy you eat, you are now satisfying that mineral level, which essentially is going to fill you up. Just like we talked about earlier, low glycemic index foods are high in nutrients and that's what fills you up. So this, this just even adds on to that and makes sure you're full and you're done and you're not reaching for the snacky food or the cookie or whatever's in your cabinet, okay? So give that a try. And I've also had tons of testimonies and comments and emails of people saying, hey, I'm like way less hungry. Why? They're curious. They're like, well, you're actually feeding your body what it requires and what it needs to be full. Simple to understand, right? Give the body what it's not getting from food because as you guys know from me, our food is on average 30% less nutritious and that's even the vegetables, the fruits, the meats, the cheese, the, the wheat, all of it, all the healthy stuff, it's deficient. So fill in those blanks, you're gonna be less hungry, you're gonna be happier and you're just gonna accidentally lose weight. I've had a lot of people 
accidentally lose weight because they're just not eating as much. Even if they don't entirely change their, their food habits, which you don't always have to to see that, that result because you're satisfying that mineral level. All right. So this was a shorter video, but it's real, real simple to understand. I took notes so I don't get disorganized. Um, but moral of the story, guys, stop with the fad diets. They drive me nuts. Sugar is not your enemy. Eat a lot of fruit, please. You're going to feel better. Fat, make sure you're eating good fat. It's, you, you need it for your brain all throughout your body. Okay. And just find nutrient dense food. If you guys don't know, I'm going to actually walk you over here. This chart behind me, I'm going to show you. You may not be able to read it, but if you guys look up the nutrient density chart, I mean, it gives you everything. I mean, tons and tons of options on nutrient dense food that you can buy at a grocery store or, or whatever you want to do. But guess what the number one nutrient dense food is? Eggs, 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 eggs. Eat as many eggs as you can. I eat them every day. I mean, they are just a staple of my diet. But I would encourage you guys to snag that nutrient density chart. It's really cool to just have it hanging up if you're curious on, man, what can I eat? Um, I'm not sure what to cook today. And that's an awesome resource to make sure you're not, you know, slipping back to that high glycemic index food. Okay. So aim for nutrient density. Of course, lastly, take your minerals. It's going to fill in those gaps you're not getting from food no matter how clean you eat. And you're gonna be a happy camper. You're gonna feel good, you're gonna have more energy, you're gonna have less bloating, less inflammation. And most importantly, you're gonna lose some weight. Who, who don't wanna lose weight? Or at least maintain that weight. I am around 8% body fat. I'm 20, I'm gonna be 28 in a few days. I do 80, 20, I eat fast food. I'm very flexible, but I'm also very conscious of like how I'm feeling. And I have never felt better after implementing the 80-20 because my mind can relax. You know, I know that I don't have symptoms or things I'm trying to deal with anymore. And I just generally am happy because I don't have to be the dude that's avoiding all the food on vacation and you know, or you're out with friends and you're like, oh yeah, I can't eat this, I can't eat that. No, I can eat anything I want and I feel amazing. But obviously those five days, four or five days a week, you taking care of yourself is the key, okay? Obviously, remember guys, supplement your minerals. As a reminder, we are giving away one free bag of optimized minerals every single month. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment with your questions, your feedback of this video, and most importantly, share with your friends, share with your family. More people need to hear this stuff. There's way too many people confused in this health space, and that's why I'm making this YouTube channel. Loving the longer content, it's been really fun for me. But regardless, thanks guys. See you in the next one.